Hello, this video is part one of a series of videos in which uh, we will create the game of Tetris using the Java programming language. By the end of this series, I intend to have a working game of Tetris. However, in this video, I'm just going to start you off with some basic starter code, which I'll share with you um, to kind of set the ground for the next couple of videos. Um, so I'm going to run through that uh, starter code with you um, now. Um, so let me let me just show you actually what happens when you kind of run this code right now uh, It's just like I said, it's just kind of the groundwork for what we're going to be doing You see you've got a piece going down. Uh, it's going to get to the end of the board um, And a new piece is generated not much to look at um, But we have all five pieces there um, They're not color coordinated yet. They will be we will um, make them kind of look uh, as they do here um, the, each of those pieces is um, in Tetris is called a Tetromino um, and we are going to uh, eventually have them looking like that um, as they go down the board um, with the colors they, they actually look the shape we got right uh, it's just the colors that we're gonna work on um, yeah and so uh, this is a great starting point uh, and let me explain to you what I've done to get to this uh, point. Uh, as you can see in the code over here, uh, we have um, our imports and uh, just five imports and basically what they do are, um, I'm gonna get out of this at the moment. Um, they allow us to, uh, the, the, if about four of them, the color, the graphics, the J-frame and the panel are really just associated with the graphical user interface, the GUI um, and so it just sets up our, our um, board of J panel and everything's on top of that uh, J frame and then a J panel and then everything's on top of that. I'll go over kind of how that works. But um, and then these are kind of our key listeners, which allow us to put import into the uh, screen. So basically able to use our um, uh, keyboard to move our pieces side to side and to rotate. All right. Um, all right, so the, the next thing is we have our class header, which, like any other Java class, we extend our J panel, which I said is kind of our um, starting point for our graphical user interface. And then this is the first uh, uh, really important piece of code that is not related to the graphics or anything. Um, this is our array, um, our multi-dimensional array <coughs> of, uh, that represents our pieces. And so each line in this array is a separate two-dimensional array, like right here, what I've highlighted, that represents um, each of the pieces. So you have the five pieces. Uh, again, maybe I'll just bring this back into the screen for frame of reference. Put it right over there. I'm going to shrink it a little more. Um, yeah, and as you can see, I have this marked as... Um, this is the square, the, uh, the line, that's this one here, the L, this one here, the T and the Z. Um, and I, I use the L as my uh, example here just because this might be confusing. How the heck does this represent one of them? Um, so think of it this way as the starting point, point on the board. Um, uh, as you saw, we had a board you may, may or may or not have noticed that that board was 10... Um, 10 squares uh, in width and 22 in length, which I looked up and that is the uh, design of Tetris, a basic Tetris game. Um, and uh, so anyway, this, these coordinates, these represent coordinates. And so I'm looking at this one in particular to kind of explain to you how this works. And these are the starting coordinates and being in there, I might need to bring this up just to kind of show you. Starting coordinates, this is zero, zero, this cell right here. Um, so, th so that's what's going on there. I'm going to close that out. And so this, like being the L, is, so this right here is this asterisk here. It's in spot zero, zero. Then the next one is, so this, these represent um, row column, right? And so row one, column zero, there's the next one. And then row two, column zero, there, right there. And then uh, two one, uh, which I just noticed this isn't updated. Uh, two one, um, right there, and that's why our L was actually upside down when I was just running it. Um, and so there's your L represented by these asterisks. Um, you have your L. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Um, as we go on, hopefully it will make even more sense. Uh, so that's your starting point, and then I'll show you how I kind of move it and update um, these coordinates as they move down the board. All right, uh, so I'm going to move on. And so the next thing we have are the, the width and the height, which I've already described. Um, that represents how many rows and, and columns we have. Uh, the height is the, the amount of rows and the, the width of the amount of columns. Um, the block size, this is something that you could um, edit if you want it to uh, have the board larger or smaller. 30 seemed to be a nice fit. Like if I made this 10, you'll see that now my, my board is going to be a lot smaller. See that? <laughs> Probably too small. Um, like I said, 30 seemed to be a nice fit. So uh, that's what I have there. Current pieces, that is that represents the piece that is moving down the screen. Um, so for all intents and purposes, it is one of these five. It, it will be holding one of those five. Um, and that's why it's a two-dimensional array. Um, current row and column, that is how I move the pieces around the board. Um, so th this is going to start out at um, uh, zero. And I think I have this starting out at four just for um, kind of centering it along the uh, the width of the board uh, and so yeah we'll look at that in a second so we increment the row to move the piece down and then increment or decrement the column to move it left or right on the screen uh, pnum just represents which piece um, the current piece is holding which piece so which of these rows um, we're talking about um, the board that is I, that works in conjunction with the width and the height and the block size to um, make our board appear on the screen. Uh, the, those 20, um, 22 rows by 10 columns on the screen. Uh, I'll more about that um, as we get in more into the code. Here's our constructor method. And I just set the board with the appropriate height and width row column. Um, I add our key listener. Like I said, we're gonna use that in the next video. We're getting to this um, in more detail on how we could use take input from the user to move our pieces, rotate them and all that. Um, and then uh, just that the, so the constructor gets started when the game is, uh, you know, when you bring up the game, when you uh, initialize the program and the new piece method, which I'll look at in a second, generates a new piece that shows uh, like, so when, when we run this, a new piece is generated on the board. So that's what's going on there. By the way, I'm going to slow this down. This is just for testing purposes to show you how a new piece is generated every time one goes off the screen. This is a little fast. Um, so anyway, uh, so let's look at the real quickly at the new piece, um, create new piece function. Uh, and basically what that does is um, uh, it's a method that um, picks a random number uh, basically between zero and five, uh, but not including five because it represents a row in here, right? So there's uh, five rows, zero through four. And um, then it uh, uses that random number. We assign it to our PNUM, which for right now is not really useful, but you'll see how we'll use this variable in future videos. But we just use that to set our current piece array equal to that specific row in our pieces array. Um, and then, as I said, our row and column start out at zero and four. Uh, so that, that's it, that's pretty basic. It literally just picks a piece from the pieces array um, and sets it to our current piece. Um, all right, so then let's look at move down. The move down function, uh, it's pretty simple. It adds to the current row. Um, if we can move, it adds to the current row. Remember that the top row is zero and the bottom row is, is 22. So adding moves your piece down the board. Uh, we do have a can move function, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, but if we can't move, that means the piece is off the board. In future videos, we'll update the, the can move to deal with when we bump into a piece that is already on the board. Um, and that's kind of how you build up your um, pieces on the screen, right? Uh, and we'll take that into account when it touches another piece. But anyway, for right now, it's really just dealing with when it gets to the bottom of the board, it creates a new piece. And that just keeps that cycle going. So let's look at how we're using the can move function. Um, so we look at each cell in our uh, Tetris piece. So that's why 
<clears throat> there's four for the all the all the blocks here are made of four cells right and so what we are looking at is each of those cells and is it off the screen is really the most important thing at the moment that we're looking for now in when we get to move it side to side this will be um, important to look at because um, we want to make sure it stays on the screen and doesn't go off left or right and then this will come in handy in future videos zero basically represents an empty spot on the screen because remember when you get into the game of tetris there could be many pieces um so if we just do a ah tetris game let's just take a quick look just so you understand what i'm talking about yeah so th this is a good example there's all these pieces already on the screen they would be represented by a number not equal to zero and so when this piece um, if it was to hit into here, um, then it can no longer move. So that's what is being represented by that. And so it just returns true or false based on that. Um, hopefully I explained that uh, in enough detail. So uh, the paint method. Pretty simple here. We're just drawing everything to the screen. We draw our board, um, which uh, that's this multi, uh, this nested for loop to go through our multidimensional board array. And um, I give... Uh, for our board, there's like a, a green outline, and then I color in the the pieces blue. So again, I'll just keep bringing this up so you see. That's everything in the background, right? Um, and as we look at the the next uh, for loop in here, that is drawing the current piece to the screen, which I have a, it's hard to see, but there's actually a black outline around um, each of the pieces, and then we fill it in with red. Um, so pretty simple that that's all that is going on i use the the block size in conjunction with our um uh, you know these variables here to figure out where on the board everything should be placed um again not nothing really complicated though uh then let, let's take a look at our um, main method which sets everything in motion by creating an object of the uh, j frame and we also create an object of our Tetris game. Um, and then we call our, in this while loop, we call our move down and repaint. These are milliseconds. That's why that's fast. I would probably get this back to like a thousand to make it at a proper speed. Um, and then, yeah, this just keeps on going until the game ends. We keep moving down and repainting the board. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. But this is our starting point. Like I said, in the next video, we're going to do some really cool stuff to um, get features of the game in action.